What you see here is a Zigbee module along with a Zigbee adapter. So many people from my previous video asked me Umesh which kind of Zigbee module they should buy because there are a lot of different variety of Zigbee modules out there. So what you see right now I have a Zigbee that is called XBS2C. This is a product from DG International. You can see it's written DG and to understand Zigbee module properly you have to understand first that the reason why I use this kind of module is because it is very versatile so you can connect to any device that you like and that's what I love about this it's very modular and you see this one this little crazy size this is called Zigbee uh, module basically you can see it has a Zigbee MAC address you can see it has a Zigbee MAC address here and then it has the part number and all other things all right so it has this Zigbee pins now this pins doesn't fit into breadboard so if you take a breadboard and if you try to fit it it doesn't work with the breadboard that's why you need this kind of zigbee adapter so this is called zigbee adapter now when you place the zigbee uh, module on the zigbee adapter then you have to make sure there is a little um, you know kind of marking here a kind of hexagon kind of things so you have to place it like this the zigbee module right so zigbee module will be placed on the top of zigbee adapter something like this and make sure the antenna part will be facing towards this leds so there are led tx rx rssi and all of the you know power leds and all other things and this flat surface will be facing towards this USB connector right this is very important and there is a reset button up here so if sometimes if you uh, try to connect the Zigbee module with a computer and if that doesn't able to detect with a computer then maybe you want to press this reset button a couple of time to detect the Zigbee module now some people just so they take the Zigbee module like this and then they place it like this and if you place it like this and if you whole life if you try to connect to the computer and then it would never detect so make sure you always connect the zigbee module like this right that's why i said always look for this marking okay this is the hexagon marking which represents that this hexagonal part let me just press put it like this it's crazy sometimes so this hexagonal part will going to match to the hexagon that is laid out on the pcb so something like this another thing is you can see the zigbee has this pin numbers like 3.3 volt the first pin is 3.3 volt then tx rx and the ground zigbee usually work on 3.3 volt that's why uh, you know you you have 3.3 volt pin here so there are zigbee modules out there in a the market which doesn't have this uh, labels uh, pin labels so you just have to stay away from those kind of zigbee module and if you for some reason if you cannot find this kind of zigbee module out there in the market then you have to make sure the first pin is 3.3 volts second is tx third is rx and the last pin in the left row would become in ground if you uh, hold the zigbee module something that i hold in my hand something like this now the zigbee is very interesting now this zigbee one zigbee will going to talk to other zigbee right look at this i have two zigbee modules right now so the one zigbee wirelessly send a data to the other zigbee and that's the whole purpose of zigbee module zigbee is basically a wireless communication protocols and it can transfer the data from one zigbee to other zigbee somewhere over 60 meters to 120 meters depends on which zigbee which company what quality of zigbee module that you have so let's say if you want to create a project where you want to use the zigbee module then let's say you have a raspberry pi and you have a raspberry pi that you connect with the zigbee module okay and then let's say you have an arduino and then you connect the zigbee module with an arduino and now you can connect the sensor to the arduino and the zigbee will read the data from the arduino and then send it to the other zigbee module and then give it to the raspberry pi that's how the wireless communication works right so the arduino and raspberry pi will going to talk to each other over zigbee as a wireless protocol all right now let me um, just take the Zigbee module out here and place this Arduino and Raspberry Pi away from it. 
let's talk about the the type of the zigbee module now uh, when you buy a zigbee module in the market it's just a one zigbee module right it doesn't have any type or something like this so how would you know that one device which you connect to arduino and the other zigbee that you connect to the raspberry pi which one is what usually when you buy the zigbee you get the zigbee this is called zigbee right this this blue color pcb and this green color pcb is in zigbee adapter uh, so it there's nothing like a type or something but there is something in zigbee uh, protocol is called configuration so the zigbee if can be configured as a coordinator it could be configured as a router and it could be configured as an end device so let's say if you have one zigbee uh, talking to other zigbee then you might uh, configure this uh, rightmost zigbee module as a coordinator and the leftmost zigbee module as a router and they can ex exchange the data back and forth because every zigbee network maybe i will make another video where i'm going to talk about uh, the zigbee uh, network uh, terminologies uh, zigbee network topologies in which zigbee operates so every zigbee um, um, network has to have one coordinator and there should be a router or the end device on the other side uh, depending on what you configure now the role of the coordinator is basically he's like a master in the network that's why every network has to have the coordinator and the end device or the router will going to talk to the coordinator you can the leftmost zigbee module you can configure as either an end device or as a router now there is another video that i will put out and i will explain what makes the difference between end device and the router a router basically routes the path so it will extend the range of communication zigbee wireless communication more than 60 meters so let's say these two zigbees let's consider that this, this zigbee is an end device and the rightmost zigbee is the coordinator now they both uh, exchange the data back and forth over 60 meter range and let's say you have to communicate over 120 meter so between these two zigbees okay because this one is a coordinator and this one is end device you need to put another router zigbee okay so there is one two and three zigbee right so one two and three zigbees and now you have a 60 meter between the first zigbee and the second zigbee and another 60 meter like this so you can communicate the range using the router placed in between uh, end device and coordinator that will extend the range of communication over 120 meters say for example i hope you're getting my point right so that way you can have the zigbee as a coordinator as a router as an end device right so that's how the zigbee protocol is all about now if you want to know and learn how to configure the zigbee uh, as a coordinator or router you have the video in the description you can watch that video and uh, you can learn about how to configure the zigbee using xcdu software and configure as a coordinator and as a router and there's another video that i already have made it where i have shown you how to communicate arduino with raspberry pi using zigbee as a wireless communication protocol now if you need any help regarding zigbee or something you can check out the link in a video description or you can contact to me and i would be very happy to help you thank you very much for your time and we'll see us into the next lesson